I feel fierce. I feel feisty. And tropical. Putting all that together equals this. Hello guys and welcome to my channel. So these are outdoor fabrics. So technically I should be making pillows, cushions for outdoor. Instead, I'm making a puffer jacket. I am like obsessed with the tropical vibe going on here. With these like greens and yellow oranges and, and animals. I love jackets. So I guess I'm putting my two loves together into one. Because it's still cold outside and it was just snowing today. <sighs> Apparently, according to my boyfriend, I need to move to Dubai. Not a bad idea. Okay, I'll fill you in on how I got my pattern. I used one that I already made from the sweatshirt video, if you guys remember. If you don't, it will be in the description below because, listen, it has a free pattern, so why the capital F not? <laughs> now, I had to tweak it a bit, make it bigger to make room for the batting, and I also used my daily jacket as reference, which is also animal prints. Damn, I need to quit it. But anywho, this fabric has a lot of random animals on it. I had to strategically place my pattern pieces in a way where those animals looked good and weren't being cut off awkwardly which another thing that helped me with that is using this doctor's exam table paper that's literally all i've used as pattern paper for years it's cheap it lasts forever and you can see right through it now when it was time to cut the fabric it's always very nerve-wracking for me i don't know if anybody else feels the same way but it's mostly when i have a fabric that i'm so in love with i would just drop kick myself if i mess it up and to think about it now i think i'm in love with all the fabric i have hence why i have it in the first place so the anxiety is always with me <laughs> the magic of video editing. Now the first thing on my to-do list was put together all the different pattern pieces I had since everything from the sleeves to the front and the back pieces were all color blocked or print blocked I should say if that's a thing. I mean you guys know what I'm talking about but it seems like I can't design anything without it being color blocked or at least 90% of the stuff I would say but it makes it more fun so don't burst my bubble. Now, with most of the things you make, after you're done sewing a seam and you open that piece up, you'll have to ask yourself, to press or not to press? You know, I'm not always in the mood to whip out my iron that's literally right behind me, wait two minutes for it to heat up, and then put in that arm work. So I do a top stitch, and it works very well, especially on fabrics that are on the heavier side. So this is where things got really uneasy, I, I mean fun. I started working on the front flap that I decided to add as a cool design. Sorry for the poor drawing skills, by the way. I'll work on that later. Maybe not. But even the flap couldn't avoid color slash print blocking. But in my defense, there was a zebra on the green fabric. So it was satisfying to add more zebra fabric. And it actually makes both fabrics stand out more because of the contrast. Now, with these two seams, things were a bit different. I set my laziness aside, reached over for the iron, and pressed those seams open. I didn't want any stitches along the zebra fabric, so I figured it's for the best. This batting is already thick as it is in one layer, but I don't think that's gonna be enough. So I'm gonna double it up and have a nice and fluffy. I wanted to go for a crisscross quilted look but wasn't sure 100% so I took pieces of thread, laid them down to see how it would look and that gave me the go. Now I cut the batting to the same exact size as the pattern piece and I have learned my lesson as to why not to do that. Yes, I repeat, don't cut the batting the same size as the pattern piece. Leave the seam allowances out of the batting that way it doesn't get too bulky when you're sewing pieces together. Now okay, this part right here is the moment. I knew I effed up. Tell me how I put the neckline where the armhole is and didn't notice it until this very moment. Like what?
a few moments later. Okay, back to normal. Now, to make it a true puffer jacket, I gotta add those stitch lines along the body. The distance that I did between each stitch line was four inches. I felt that was balanced out pretty well. I placed all the pieces side by side just to ensure that they would match up. And as for the collar, thank goodness I decided to test it out and see how it would look around my neck because that would pop my head. So I had to make adjustments, cut out the neckline, add panels onto the collar to make everything bigger. And I ran out of batting. Okay, I have more batting. Now, these are the lovely cargo pockets and little did I know what I was getting myself into. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a newbie at sewing, but to be honest, I haven't sewed too many cargo pockets, so I was a bit rusty to say the least. I was experimenting as I went, but I learned, and if you want to learn how to make them, comment down below with a video request and I'll be more than happy to share my knowledge. Here is my cargo pocket. Because I want to incorporate this little clip thingy in like the flap that I'm doing in the front, I want to also incorporate the same kind of clip thingies in the cargo pocket. But my problem is I don't have straps that are not super like wide, that are like really thin. So I'm going to try to figure out how to do those straps. So so thank you to my boyfriend jay burger mcfries go subscribe to his channel <laughs> he said why don't you just cut it in half and i said um no but then i was like um yes and i burned the edges to make the plastic melt and not fray and problem solved well at least in theory because it was more like taking one step forward but then three steps back with another problem that came up but i overcame that obstacle now, a very important tip when sewing cargo pockets onto your garment piece is marking where the placement is. Otherwise, trust me when I tell you that it will come out looking like you did it in the dark. Nobody wants that. These pockets right here are absolutely draining me. Kind of regretting the fact that I'm doing those strips the way that I'm doing them. Kind of not regretting it at the same time because it kind of looks nice. But goddamn, I'm so behind schedule because it's so much work. All right, I'm gonna call it a night because I need some sleep. The next day. The next day, let me tell you, was that any nicer to me? I had to hand sew the pocket flap onto the jacket since my machine was just not having it. But when it was done, it had a nice clean finish to it. And the bottom looked a little bit off and unbalanced, so I added more length to it by adding a tiger panel. Now, for the front flat panel, I needed a closer, so a big buckle it was, and I sandwiched it between the two layers before sewing it all down. Now, unlike the rest of the jacket, I only used one layer of batting for this piece, which is why I felt a lot easier to put it through the sewing machine. I mean, yes, I have the Stinger Heavy Duty machine, which is awesome, but you really can't compare it to an industrial machine, which can eat up many, many layers with no problem. Kind of reminds me of my appetite. But anywho, when you have layers to a certain garment, figure out in what order you need to sew everything. I could have easily forgotten about this piece, especially since I was super duper tired, but I knew I had to pin it down to the front before I started sewing the front and back together. Now the same thing goes for the other strap piece on the other side. I have my notches there to help me figure out the proper placement and then I sewed the shoulder seams only. Oh my god, what am I doing? I'm creating a, like a, a weapon here. I left a pin in and this could definitely hurt someone. Oh yeah, yay. I don't know if I should set in the sleeves next or I should go with the collar. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Yes, all right, I'm doing the collar next. Finding the middle of both pieces and using that as my first mark to pin is very helpful. After that, I would just go to the very outer edges, match and pin those together, and then work my way in. Now, if you can't tell by my facial expressions in this footage that I was in slight distress, then I don't know what to tell you. But look at what the presser foot is going through. It's getting stuck in all that batting. It looks like it just went through a blizzard. That was torture. But... I'm sure that this is more torture to watch, but remember one thing, YOLO, and I'll still win in a dance-off. 
Anywho's, my favorite word to use. <laughs> the sleeves were cut with the new batting that I just got and it felt too new. Like it was too stiff. The previous batting was half beat up. It was thrown around here and there from place to place, but I still took no chance and placed a tissue paper right over the batting as I was sewing so my pressure foot didn't go through another blizzard. Ugh, torture. Now it was time to close the sucker up first by sewing the side seam all the way up through the sleeve and then by adding a zipper. I'm actually very shocked. I usually hand baste my zippers before throwing them through the sewing machine, but I was actually able to get it done all in one shot. Now, if you think I'm almost done, wrong. I had to sew the entire lining the same way as I did with the outer shell of the jacket, but thinking video editing once again i won't put you through that annoying process okay okay i don't want to sound too depressing or negative you know when they say that nothing good is ever easy or something close to that well this jacket is the perfect example i went through hell around the corner and back again installing the lining and if you only knew but it was well worth it now, one thing I want to mention is that after going outside with it and taking pictures and staying extremely warm in it, I wanted to make the sleeves longer, so I did just that. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. That was it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you at my next video. Bye.